good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. So welcome back to my channel. So hello everyone. So welcome back to another vi video discussion that we will be having. So today I'm very excited to share something new to you again. So again, welcome back to all of you. So welcome back and I hope that you will be enjoying our discussion for this morning so let's dig into our topic for today and I, what i will be sharing is actually quite interesting for us today so let's dig into our topic and that is all about your ra9288 also known as the newborn screening app of 2004 so this is a republic act here in the philippines concerning about the newborn screening of our newborn obviously so um, as we go along, I will be discussing and will be sharing to you what what are the things that are very much important with regards to this law. But before we go deeper into that, this is actually the outline of everything that we will be discussing. So first, we need to define what is a newborn screening is all about. Secondly, we will be talking about the inborn errors of metabolism, which are actually the diseases, the disorders that we try to detect. Or we try to screen during this examination and at the same time we also have the ra9288 which is the law that we have here in the philippines and also some updates regarding that so for this video i will actually be discussing the first two the newborn screening and inborn error of metabolism i will be going to separate two um i will be going to separate this video into two so that you won't be uh you can actually have um time in between or a break in between so as you can see most of my videos i aim to have it around 25 to 30 minutes so sometimes i i exceed it, i am exceeding 30 minutes but my goal is actually to only have it around 20 to 30 minutes because i myself is using the pomodoro technique when i was when i am studying even up to now so that's the reason why maybe some of you are asking why can I not just upload the video of the entire hour that I am discussing that's the reason one that's the reason why that's the reason why I actually want to do it like a pomodoro technique so in between videos you can have your break you can go surf the internet for a while and then come back after your short break so let's dig in so more about those techniques that I do in the future videos that I am I'll be doing so I'm actually thinking of making videos regarding my study techniques specifically right now I have this I am actually practicing a new study technique which I will be sharing to you very very soon and I'm excited about that so let's move on so first is newborn screening so newborn screening what is newborn screening all about so newborn screening or NBS we will be you will be seeing NBS not national bookstore but you will be saying it more much in this powerpoint so it's a public health program aimed at an early identification of infants who are affected by a certain genetic metabolic or infectious condition so what we aim here is actually to detect a particular abnormality or a particular condition in our patients so most of the time, okay, most of the time, there are actually infections or this genetic disorders that can actually, that needs to be identified early stage of their life to avoid irreversible damages, not just mentally, but on the holistic um, gr uh, growth of a person. So, early identification, we're talking about that, and it's very crucial when it comes to newborn screening because early identification and timely intervention can lead to significant reduction of morbidity, the cases of um, diseases, and of course, mortality and associated disabilities in affected infants. So it's very important that we have it here immediately, and it's very important to reduce morbidity, mortality, and possible or preventable disabilities because of those diseases. So, our newborn screening enabled early detection and management of a certain metabolic disorder. So, that is our goal. So, as you can see on your right, in your screen, you can see a baby with a, a, um, who, are, who is actually undergoing your newborn screening test. 
And it is very important again, we're talking about um, early detection so that we can actually manage the situation, manage the condition of the, the patient more efficiently. At the same time, the reason why we have the newborn screening at the very young age is because if left untreated, this may lead to mental retardation and worse to death. Okay? Worse to death. So the early diagnosis and treatment of these disorders assures the child's right to live and safeguard him or herself to reach his or her full potential. So what about this now? So again, we're talking about newborn screening and I want to show you something. Okay, I want to show you something. So here is actually a famous photo. So if you have um, cross the internet regarding the newborn screening, you can actually see much of this photo. So as you can see, these are two individuals. These are two children, two kids that you can actually see. And they are actually the model of the newborn screening. To be exact, both of them, okay, both of them actually has a congenital hypothyroidism or your CH, which is one of the disease or disorder that is actually being detected using your newborn screening test. And I just want to, I just want you to look at them closely. So, one, this girl here is actually the one that underwent newborn screening test, and this kid here was not able to have himself checked during um when he was born and eventually he developed or he had the irreversible effect of congenital hypothyroidism so what i'm trying to say here is that undergoing newborn screening tests would not just save a life but would save or would improve the the quality of life of an individual greatly so as you can see this um girl here as opposed to this kid this boy this boy here you can actually see the difference there and if you're gonna ch if you're gonna realize it if you're go going to reflect on it it actually the only difference between these two kids is that one got the test and the other one did not have the test so as simple as that as simple as that difference between the two you can actually see how great the difference is for them that is why newborn screening test is very important it is very needed to avoid and actually to prevent preventable disorders preventable um diseases or abnormalities in our ch children so asking now now that we um discuss the newborn screening so much about it is that what are we checking during the newborn screening? What are the diseases? What are the disorders that I am trying to check that my patient might actually have because of um, certain abnormalities or genetic problems? These are now the inborn errors of metabolism. Yeah, those three triplets there are actually very much excited and maybe you are too. So let's dig in. So the error, inborn error of metabolism are these six. In the former um law, in the former law, the New Bird Screening Act of two thousand four, these six are actually mandated to be tested on all newborn. So this six, so I'll be giving you an updates later on as we discuss this. But more importantly, in the inborn error of metabolism, we actually have six major um disorders that we check first one is your congenital hypothyroidism the one that our models had before so we also have your congenital adrenal adrenal hyperplasia we have your phenylketonuria your galactosemia your glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency and your maple syrup urine disorder so these six are actually the most commonly checked um inborn errors of metabolism so I want us to go through each of the six and so let's move on. So for the inborn error of metabolism, the first one is your congenital hypothyroidism, also known as your cretinism. So this is the this is a condition whereby newborn babies who are an who are newborn babies are unable to make enough thyroid hormone because they have your congenital hypothyroidism. So thyroid hormone is very important because if you're going to go into your endocrinology, 
Okay, in the or endocrinology, again what 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 organ produces your thyroid hormone? Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, it's your thyroid, of course. So, your thyroid, your thyroid hormone to be exact is plays a very important role when when it comes to growth and metabolism. So, that is very important. Aside from that, aside from congenital hypothyroidism, we also have your congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And people with congenital adrenal hyperplasia lack one of the enzymes needed for proper function of your adrenal glands. So you all know that your adrenal glands could be divide, can be divided into your adrenal medulla and your adrenal cort- cortex. So your adrenal cortex is further divided into your g- zones, your GFR, your jo- zona glomerulosa, fasciculata, and your zona reticularis, and of course your your um, adrenal medulla. So it's very important because when you lock one of these enzymes, either your 21 hydroxylase, 11 hydroxylase, or your 18 hydroxylase, your um, adrenal glands cannot function properly. And eventually, all other hormones that are also produced in your adrenal gland, be it your 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 mineralocorticoids, your steroid hormones, your test some of those precursors could no longer be produced because of this deficiency. So that is very important. So aside from that, we also have your phenylketonuria. Your phenylketonuria, these are now babies with missing enzyme called your phenylalanine hydroxylase. This enzyme, your phenylalanine hydroxylase, is very important for the breakdown of essential amino acids called your phenylalanine which is actually usually found in your milk. And most of the, um, in cases of phenylketonuria, you can actually um, see babies actually that are having musty or musty other urine, okay? So mass, musty other urine. So you can actually observe that much in our babies and in our um, patients with PKU or your phenyl. Um, your PKU, okay, your phenylketonuria. So aside from that, okay, aside from that, you also have your galactosemia. So by its name, galactosemia, it has to do with your galactose. Again, a, a a major protein, a major sugar rather, a major carbohydrate of your 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 breast milk, which is lactose. That is glucose and galactose. So an inherited metabolic disorder caused an enzyme deficiency and is transmitted as a recessive trait. So it results in the accumulation of your sugar galactose within your body. And usually the the main or the most common enzyme deficient with our patient with galactosemia is actually your galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase or your GALT1. So the moment that you lock this particular enzyme, you'll actually start to experience deposition or accumulation of sugar glucose within your body and you don't like that because if it remains there it can actually um cause some um abnormalities and malfunction within your system so we have discussed the first four but let us go first to your phenylketonuria your phenylketonuria again the deficiency in your phenylalanine hydroxylase so we actually have a screening test for your PKU, which is actually your ferric um, ferric chloride tube test. So what we you, will you use is the urine of your patient and add 5% of ferric chloride. And you would actually observe if there is a production of a permanent blue color, blue green color in the patient urine. So if there's a blue green color that is positive, meaning that patient actually... Um, that patient uh, is not able to metabolize your phenylalanine further. That's why in your ferric chloride test, it is testing positive. Aside from that, we can actually also have your your GOT3 bacterial inhibition test. I am kind of sorry because I think the photo is blocking a letter here, but it's still here, by the way. 
So, in your confirmatory test, the confirmatory test for your phenylketonuria, and I want you to master and really take down notes when it comes to your PKU, specifically your Guthrie bacterial inhibition test because it's very important. And eventually, some of the confirmatory tests in other inborn metabolic diseases are actually mod modification of the Guthrie test. So let's move on to the Guthrie bacterial inhibition test. So what we have here is a bacillus subtilis in a culture, okay? A bacillus um, subtilis in a culture with beta-2 thionyl alanine. So as you can see, take for example, look on your right. This is actually the, um, the Petri dish, your plate with, um, with your bacillus subtilis. So your bacillus subtilis is actually exposed to your beta 2 thionyl alanine. And what is what does your beta 2 thionyl alanine does? It actually inhibits the growth of be, your of your bacillus subtilis. So originally if uh, your your um, bacillus subtilis is in contact with your beta 2 thionyl alanine, there will be no growth. Okay? There will be no growth. But again for patient with PKU, what happens is that there is an increased amount of phenylalanine because you don't have the or the enzyme to break it down further. So, a, an increased amount of phenylalanine in your patient would actually counteract the action of your beta-2 phenylalanine. And that is the job of your phenylalanine. It actually counteracts the inhibition of your beta-2 alanine. And if that's the case, you will be having a growth. And a growth means a positive result. A positive result means with growth, meaning your beta-2 alanine was inhibited by an increased amount of alanine found in your patient's specimen, meaning your patient is deficient of a particular enzyme causing him now or her to have your phenyl ketinuria. Are we clear? So I just want you to really um, study your ferric chloride and your Guthrie inhibition test more. All right. So moving on, we also have your glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, which is actually m one of the most common um, inborn errors of metabolism. So your G6PD, as I call it, is recognized as an important enzyme in glucose metabolism. Because if you're going to go to your glycolysis, you can actually see that G6PD is one of the first enzymes that will actually participate in your glycolysis. And again, glycolysis is very important. Not only that, your G6PD also is a, um, a key factor in the, in the ma maintenance of the integrity of your red blood cells. Okay? So... Going on now, what we have here is that there is a deficiency, obviously, of a particular enzyme, which is your G6PD. Okay, so in its its deficiency is commonly associated with a number of hereditary disorders. So, like what I'm mentioning a while back, G6PD, um, maybe among the six, is one of the most common. Okay, so we also have your MSUD or your maple syrup urine disease. It's, it is now a metabolic disorder caused by a genetic mutation that inhibit the breakdown of certain amino acids. And maybe you're wondering, why do we call it maple syrup um, urine disease? Simply because your urine actually smells like a maple syrup that you put on your pancakes. So maybe you're having your breakfast today and you're having your pancakes and you might actually want... A maple syrup, not MSUD of course, but a maple syrup to go with that for this morning. So, those are the six um, error, inborn errors of metabolism that I will be discussing for you this um, in this in this video. So, moving on and moving on when it comes to your maple syrup urine disease. So. One of the most um, probable causes is that there is a deficiency in a branch chain amino acid enzyme which has increased either in your leucine, isoleucine, or your valine in your blood or in your urine. So these are actually the most common um, amino acid that is not metabolized properly because of MSUD. 
So what you do is actually to have a screening test using your 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine test, which actually is a screening test. So if there is a if there is a yellow turbidity or there is a yellow precipitate, that would mean man you're positive with um MSUD, but you still go need to go and perform confirmatory tests using your amino acid chromatography. All right. So that is that is for your MSUD. So we discuss about your congenital hyperthyroidism, congenital adrenal hypoplay hy hypoplasia. We have your um phenylketonuria. We also have your your G six PD. We have your maple syrup urine disease. Okay, I'm try I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. So what is that other one that I am missing? PKU and of course let's go back I cannot remember it though we have your galactosemia Ayan. we have your galactosemia so those six are the most common um, those six are actually the, the six disorders or errors of metabolism mandated by the law to be tested for all our inborns all right so, so much about that. We discuss your newborn screening. We discuss your inborn errors of metabolism. So now, for now, I will be saying goodbye. And I want to leave you with this um, quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Saying, intelligence plus character. That is the true goal of education. So I hope you had a great day. You have a great time with our discussion. So, thank you so much. If you have questions, please do leave your comments down below or email me on my email. So, thank you so much. This has been Jomar Adam. So, please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel for you to be able to get the latest um, happenings and you, for you to be notified for my latest um, upload. So, I will be up. Um, the next part, we'll talk about now your law. So I hope that you learned something and I'll see you on our next video.